Hi guys, welcome back to The Hangout. It's Sid. And if you love music as much as I do, well, this is the right podcast for you. Today, we've got a very special guest who is a rising star from the looks of it can pretty much do anything if that's dance, sing, <laughs> act, surf, and shred it on the guitar. And you know him as the kind-hearted jock um, who has his eyes set on a girl who's crushing on a ghost. This might just be like the weirdest love triangle someone could ever find themselves in. He plays Nick on Julie and the Phantoms. This is Sasha Carlson. Welcome to the show. What's up, everybody? You hyped me up way too much, though. That, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. Hey, that's a good way to put it. It is a love triangle. It's like a weird. It is a weird love triangle. Yeah. How would yeah. if, okay if you were in that situation yourself? How would you navigate this love triangle? Oh man, I don't even see. That's hard. See, that's really hard because if like Luke's a ghost, like oh, it just I'm just kind of torn because obviously, you know, if I were to care about someone like that, you know, you want them to be happy, but then if the other person isn't real, it's like I don't know. That's such that's a rough spot to be in. I'm happy I'm not in it right now. <laughs> Yeah, how do you navigate it? Because if you, if you're, if the girl you're crushing on is in love with a ghost, do you even have a chance? Right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's, uh, it's tricky. It's very tricky. Okay, cool. Let's just dive right into the music. And um, I want to get like a good sense of your background in music. What was like the earliest memory that you have connected to music? Uh, well, my, well, my background's uh, actually, my background's dance. So I, music was always like in my um, music, music's always kind of been in my household too. You know, my parents, they love music. Um, they used to go to, Co they go to Coachella every year when there's not a pandemic. They're awesome. They, and they've, ex they, they've exposed me and my sister to so many um, great artists, but yeah, music's always just been in, in, in our house and stuff. Um, but you know, I started, my background was dance, like I was saying. And, um, and you really find like when you're dancing, you, you, you don't dance just to dance. You dance because like music makes you feel a certain way. And so I've always felt like that connection to music when I'm on stage and performing. And, um, there's something about it that just makes you want to move. And it's so, um, inspiring. It just gives you, gives me this feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Like what sort of feelings and expressions do you get yourself when you dance because every single different type of dance gives yeah. different emotions everything yeah really it, it it's it's all across the board you know like uh sometimes in in this past year I haven't really been able to dance as much which is it's been a bummer just because the pandemic but um you know when things were open I was going quite a bit especially in Vancouver too harbor oh my gosh I miss harbor I saw that video and I was like wow Sasha got moves <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you uh yeah you know it, it it really depends on you know who you take from and um sort of the common combo that you know you learn in class and stuff and um that's always fun because like uh you know depending on the teacher you'll kind of know what you're getting yourself into uh mm -hmm. but then sometimes you have other teachers where you're just like I have no clue what I'm gonna get let's see what this class brings out of me. And it's, it's fun no matter what. So as, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. Did you, you grew up doing dance, um, tap or hip hop or both? Yeah. So I, I grew up doing my main three styles were, um, ballet, jazz and tap. And so I, I started dancing. I, I started doing that when I was around like, uh, six or seven. Um, and then I did that all the way through, um, when I was, like 14, 13 or 14. Um, and then I, I sort of minimized my hours of dance and really focused on acting and stuff. But um, I started doing hip hop when I was like 12 or 13. And it was very like uh, um, here and there because I'd go to LA and um, for auditions and stuff. And whenever I would be down there, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go try to take a class at like Millennium or, um, you know, I would try to fit it in, but it wasn't a very consistent thing. And then um, once I started going to the city more and doing more and more auditions, and then, uh, you know, when I ended up in Vancouver for that period of time for filming, it was amazing because, you know, I would go dance like a couple times a week and at a really rad studio with really great people. So um, I'm very thankful for that exposure, you know. That's so cool that you were able to kind of get a taste for a different sort of scene in Vancouver. 
what what sort of like different influences were there in Vancouver that may not be found in California? Yeah, see, I I love I love it so much. There's there's it's it's kind of like sometimes if I take a, if I, if I take a class in LA, there's sort of like this weird, um, uh, almost like competition depending on where you go. Not mm-hmm. everywhere, but mm-hmm. some I've had like sometimes when I'm in a class, it's kind of like there's this energy like oh I need to be at the front so I can be seen or um, uh, people are trying to really uh, you know push themselves out there which I totally get um, yeah. but in Vancouver what really stuck with me and what what made me love your guys dance scene so much is um, it's just a different energy like it nothing matters like I felt like I could go into class and just make an absolute fool of myself. And I wouldn't care. I would be like, I don't care who saw me. It doesn't matter. And it's just, it, it, I just had a lot of fun. There, there's one teacher that I took from uh, in particular, uh, Eric Malapad, and he teaches at um, Harbor. And um, just the energy that he has in class, like it just, he, it, I, I don't know how to describe it, but you just, you just forget about everything that's going on and you just, you're just in the moment. And even, even if you mess up the steps, it doesn't matter. Just like moving. I don't know. It's just, it's a lot more um, laid back, I guess. And so that's what I really enjoyed about. Um, yeah. I, I just, I really enjoyed that sort of change in Vancouver. Growing up, did you, how did you transition into the music scene? Because yeah. you can play guitar, you can do all of the vocals and everything. So it all, it was all kind of like a domino effect. Um, so I started, so dance introduced me to performing and stuff. And so once I found performing, I was like, oh my gosh, I needed, I just want to get up on stage. And, um, you know, dance really uh, helped me find my passion for music as well. And just listening to music at that point, like I wasn't really playing as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, yeah, yeah, I took piano lesson, piano, piano lessons. That's not English. Um, piano <laughs> lessons when I was, I think eight or nine. And, um, and so that was sort of like my, I, I don't know how to play the piano, uh, like at all. I, I, I quit after like a year or something. I was too much it's, of a spaz. It's a hard instrument. It's so hard, but it's I could, really hard. guitar is hard too. So I, uh, instruments as a whole. <laughs> for me, for me, it was just, uh, I struggled to sit still in front of the piano. I was just so like excited. And, um, so yeah, you know, I, I started playing piano and then that led me to start singing, um, and then singing actually led me into doing musical theater, which uh, opened kind of my door to acting. And that was kind of the beginning of, of acting. But, but yeah, you know, after I started piano, I started singing. And then my passion for that grew as I, as I kind of did theater for a little bit. And then, um, and then I picked up the guitar when I was um, 11, 11 turning 12. And um, I've all, I always wanted to play the guitar because all my favorite songs were you know, and all my favorite like musical heroes could play the guitar. The, the guitar. Totally. That wasn't English either. Wow. Um, <laughs> and so, and so, yeah, I, I was actually at school in fifth grade. Um, we had like a guitar class, like session mm-hmm. for our music class. And um, I remember we were playing like these Spanish acoustics and stuff. And that was like the beginning of it. But uh, my buddy, he brought an electric, he had an electric guitar. And so he brought it to school one day and I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And I, I picked it up and I felt it and I was like, oh my goodness, like I, I, I just need, I need this. And so it just became, and then I, you know, I started practicing and taking lessons and then um, my passion just continued to grow and grow and it's still, it's still growing. I'm obsessed. Like I, I, it's never stopping. <laughs> it's crazy. Like I was just watching a lot of your covers and it seems like you've been playing guitar for like as literally since you were born. It just sounds <laughs> like you're like speaking out of the guitar, which I don't like a lot of art form is like that. It just sounds for like sure. another language. Yeah. How many guitars do you have now? I have five guitars. I have five guitars. I have um, two acoustics and then I have three electrics. And the collection hopefully will be growing soon. It's growing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you it's, one of those people that names your guitars? Um, not really, but uh, well, I don't know yet. I don't know because it's funny. Like my, like uh, the car that I drive, I named Brad, but I don't have a name for my guitar. So it's interesting. It's like some things I'll name, but then other things I won't. I don't know. My guitars at the moment though, they don't have names. Okay. Nice. Um, a lot of the cast members too, all of, a lot of them have like musical theater background. Do you think that helps leading into being on like a TV series that's sort of like a musical as well? 
Totally. I, oh my gosh, hundred percent. I think that, I think musical theater is a really, really great foundation for um, really any type of performing because, you know, if you can, if you can, uh, like if you can uh, act on a show that's live, you know, that's, that's just a very valuable skill um, that you can take into any different type of performing. Um, and it's that, uh, yeah, that skill of, 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 of performing uh, live, remembering your lines for the whole show, all the choreography, all the music and everything. So um, yeah, that, and, and also learning how to rehearse, learning how to rehearse is extremely important. And that's helped me a lot dance taught me that theater taught me that. And I'm so grateful that I had that sort of as a foundation because it helps you prepare for um, uh, just really any sort of performing situation. So I, I think it's a, the best, honestly, foundation that you can have. The Christmas story, when you did that, did any of that from things you learned there translate over to Julie and the Phantoms? Totally. I don't even know how we pull that. It, like looking back on the Christmas story, I'm like, oh my gosh, how do we do that? Um, <laughs> hundred percent. That was like my first experience really being in on camera, uh, at, for during a Christmas story. And, um, there's just certain things that you learn from being on set. Um, how, how it all works is it's, you know, it's, it's a really, so it's kind of a complex thing. There's a lot of things going on and, um, yeah, Christmas story. That was like my first exposure being in an environment like that. So, um, it definitely helped just, you know, the, the more experience that, um, you can get it just it helps so much um and and even even for julie and the phantoms like i going on set i was still like really wide-eyed like oh my gosh like uh, what's going on uh because that was my first that, yeah that was my first time filming uh for an extensive period of time on a tv series and so everything's kind of different like uh tv series is a lot more fast paced whereas like uh a christmas story was long like really long rehearsals uh, and then building up for that one big live performance. So they are different, but, you know, ha having that, that understanding of, of what it's like being on set and how it all works um, is something that can be translated into really any, any project that you work on. That's amazing. I want to just congratulate you on like the whole Julian the Phantoms so much. phenomenon. Like it's been crazy. Like you guys have been working on it for so long and it's almost been a year since you guys started production which is crazy it, it's been over a year actually we started oh, really? in, yeah we started i i mean i started in october of 2019 so we filmed from september through december of 2019 That's it's been crazy. over a year. i know i'm like freaking out it does not seem it does it seems like yesterday like uh take I feel like 20, 2020 just honestly didn't even happen at this it point didn't happen. no it didn't it was just like i feel like everyone just got subtracted a year you know, yeah. like, like, it just seems like it's such a blur, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, I was just, I was just a baby back then. No, not really, but <laughs> I feel like, I feel like if season two happens and everyone on the cast is going to be like so much older, like you're just going to see it. And if it's like supposed to just be right after too, it's going to be yeah. like, hmm. it's kind of like, a, you know, it's crazy. It was so funny. Sonny. So who plays Julian, Julie's uh, younger brother. Yeah. His voice dropped like crazy. So oh my we, goodness. And none of us, uh, none of us knew this. So we, we yeah. ended filming in December of 2019. And then uh, we did, we did, we had a couple of zoom meetings just to catch up with everybody. And then right before the show, we had a, a big zoom meeting with everybody, um, all the cast, the producers and every, and, and everyone. And uh, just to kind of pregame what we were going to be doing with promotion stuff, all that. And Sonny comes back and uh, he's just like, hey guys. And we're like, whoa, like what happened? It's crazy. His voice got so low. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. It'll be like a nice family reunion when everything comes back in full circle. And totally. that's exciting. I guess let's rewind to your audition. Yeah. Can you talk about how you initially were auditioning for Luke's character Yeah. Um, and then ended up being casted as Nick? Yeah. So, I mean, oh my gosh, the, the whole cast, the whole auditioning experience for Julian the Phantoms was the best auditioning experience I've ever had. There's something about um, the way that Kenny and, um, and everyone who's involved with the casting uh, sort of process, it, it was so laid back and so approachable. Like sometimes, I don't know, I don't, I don't get nervous a whole lot uh, for auditions and stuff, but you know, there's still some like, uh, there's, there's a little bit of nerves, but it was for some reason when I went into the room, um, 
with with Kenny and just like Dan and Dave, the producers, it just felt so organic and natural. And I felt like I could be myself. Um, and yeah, it was more fun than like, uh, I guess, nerve wracking and just exciting. And so, yeah, it was really great. In June, it was in June of 2019, I went for, I went in for Luke. And so, yeah, so I, I had a callback and all that stuff. And um, at the callback, I met Kenny, which was amazing. Um, and and yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was awesome. And then we, I, we had a test session for Luke where it was kind of like a chemistry read with, uh, all these different, um, people who are going out for the Lukes, people who are going out for the Reggie's and the, uh, and the, I just said, Owens. Owens. <laughs> the Owens, yeah. yeah. Um, the Julie's and stuff, which was so cool because I met all these amazing people. And in that group, I met Madison, Owen, Charlie, Jeremy. And so it was really awesome because, um, yeah, we spent three days at S, uh, SRI uh, recording studios in LA, which is like an insanely iconic recording studio. So I was just walking around like, oh my gosh, I think Snoop Dogg was there one day. It was crazy. I was like, what? Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and yeah, so that made the process um, going back for Nick really relaxed and, and um, really just kind of fun. Uh, I remember I went back for Nick in August of 2019, August 22nd. I know the date. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it was awesome because I had already spent time with Kenny and I already met the whole kind of crew. So it just felt like I was seeing some, I was catching up with some, some, some friends, you know? So it was um, awesome. what song did you, did you have to be like, I think you had a song you had to audition with. What yeah. Song did you okay. Audition with? okay. So I went, okay. So this is really, I have a really funny story. I'm glad you brought this up. So I was, my, my, my go-to audition song at that time was Ain't No Rest for the Wicked by Cage the Elephant. Cool. And so right before I went in for the callback, when I was going out for Luke, um, I was sitting in the waiting room. I'm like, okay, about to meet Kenny Ortega. I'm about to meet the producers. I'm getting ready. I'm like, okay, I think I know my lines. I think I'm good. Just kind of going on, going down the checklist. I'm like, all right, Ain't No Rest for the Wicked. I'm going to go in and I'm going to play it. So then there's this guy that there's this other kid that was um, going out for Luke. And so he went in before me and, um, you know, I, I wasn't like, you know, I was just, doing, I was, I wasn't, I was minding my own business, but I heard like, okay, time to play a song or something like that. They were talking about that. And um, all of a sudden I hear from inside the room. Now I was walking down the street, one out the corner and I'm like, no way. He sang the same song that I had prepared. And so then the guy before me, yeah. And I was like, oh, I looked at my dad and I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? And at that time, like, like I was very set on that song. I had rehearsed it. Um, and then I had, I had a couple like originals prepared as well, but I was bummed because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so, I was so excited to play that. So by the time it's my turn to go in the room and they're like, okay, time for you guys to play, for you to play a song. I'm like, okay. So the guy before me, he played the same song that I was played. And then I, I and they, they thought it was really funny. I just kind of like made a joke, a joke out of it. But um, like, what are the odds of that happen? That never happens. I'm like, yeah. really? but um, I ended up still playing it. And I kind of, I had my own spin on it anyway. So it sounded different, but, um, and then it was cool. I played a couple originals for them and uh, yeah, they really liked it. So it, it was, it was fun. You know, it's always, it's always amazing being able to go into audition and like, uh, like play something of yours too, which that, cause that rarely happens. Usually they'll be like, okay, I want you to sing like this or mm -hmm. that um, and put some boundaries on it. But for going out for Luke, there was no boundaries. So it, it was really awesome. And then um, because they knew that I could sing, they didn't ask me to sing for when I went back for Nick, which was awesome. So nice. that's pretty cool. Oh man. Okay. I want to talk about Julian the Phantoms, but your original music that you have been working on, you self-produced it all as well. Um, oh, Oh, the, 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 the music on Spotify. Yeah. That was like, it, it was pretty, so I, I recorded that when I was 15, um, which was an amazing experience. That was my first time like being in a recording studio. So mm -hmm. I was like, kind of wide eyed, like, oh my gosh, like what's going on. But it was, um, it was so much fun. Um, I, I'm really happy that I, um, I, I, I did that when I did just because that was like the first, when I was 15, I really got into songwriting and stuff. And, um, uh, or writing originals and, and, and all that really uh and really I was at that point I was really getting into guitar as well so um that year was very uh big for me in my sort of like development but you know those those songs that are on Spotify were like some of the first 
they some yeah they were some of the first originals i i ever wrote so it's funny because i look back on them now i'm just like weird like i'm always, i'm always so critical of them i'm just like oh, i should have done that i should have done this but um i'm so happy i did that just because it was so, it was a good snapshot of snapshot of where i was at at that period of time mm-hmm. and um and yeah thank you so much i, I really appreciate the kind words on it it, <laughs> it, it was funny like i didn't have any no one no one produced it um because you know i don't know anything about uh i don't producing or anything like that so it was basically a very raw sort of snapshot of 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 us just playing in my sort of style and um we i remember we'd sit we'd be sitting in the uh like the mixing room and be like you think this sounds good and my guitar teacher would be like uh i think and i'll be like okay well cool so it, it was pretty uh yeah it, it, it was it was it was really fun it's so crazy to see like so many young artists just being able to produce their own music now because we have access to literally everything right and it's- yeah so cool so who were some of like the influences because i know you have a very heavy rock influence background i want to say yeah oh my gosh the influence well i'd say the influences at that time were because i'm I'm always constantly finding like new um artists and stuff uh it's a constant like discovery process but i would say like my biggest influences are well, Greta, Greta Van Fleet, I don't, they're a band from Frankenmuth, Michigan. They are, they're a rock band. They're young. That was like my aha moment uh, when I first heard their song. I remember being in my kitchen and they have a song called um, Highway Tune. And I was, I was sitting in my kitchen because my parents were going to Coachella to go see them, actually. And then my mom was like, you have to check out these bands. I was just like, oh, I was like, okay. And I, I uh, once I listened to that in the first like 20 seconds, I was like, that's it. Like, that's what, what I really want to do. So, um, they, Greta Van Fleet is a, is a huge influence on me. Uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, a lot of 70s uh, rock bands and late 60s rock bands. Um, really, my inspiration comes from from everything. A, you know, anything from Stevie Wonder um, to B.B. King to Nirvana and Pearl Jam to, uh, you know, Tower of Power and like more soul, like Aretha Franklin, Etta James to Rage Against the Machine and like, uh, NWA, the Ferrisite. I, I mean, it's it's all over the board. My, you should see my playlist. It's the most unorganized thing ever. Like, <laughs> I have a couple of friends who are like, "Why don't you organize this?" I'm like, "Ah, you tell me, bro." Like, it's just yeah, it's kind of like an untamable beast. But um, I take I take inspiration from from literally everything and everywhere. That is literally the power of music, right there. It's yeah. just everything. Um, I think you did an Instagram live and you performed an original, uh, my baby, my sweet darling. Yeah. Right? I actually don't know what I should call that. Like I, I, that's just like the first, um, that was just the first, I, I didn't have a, a title for it. So the first lyrics are like my baby, my sweet darling. So I was like, oh. it's a bop. It's a bop. Just going to say you. that. I appreciate it. <laughs> honestly, that was actually the first time I, uh, I played that for anyone other than my, to my parents and sister and my cat. So, um, so that was pretty, that, that was fun. But uh, when you're songwriting, what sort of, like, how are you creating the songs? What are you basing them off of? Are they from your personal experience? Everything. It, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Like I, songwriting for me, uh, I either, I either go at it in two different ways and it's always very spontaneous, like an in the moment thing. Um, sometimes I will go into writing a song with like a purpose, like a, an idea. And I'm like, okay, I want to flesh out this idea. Um, and I have, I have this sort of like structure put out in my head. Um, other, or I'll sit down and I'll play, I'll play something on the guitar. Cause for me, it always starts on the guitar. I'll come up with a riff or some chords or whatever it might be. And then that makes me feel a certain way. Um, and then, and then I don't even know what I'm going to be writing about, but then the first words that come to my head, I put on the page and then, uh, and then it just kind of takes its own route that it wants to go. And, and sometimes it's, it's about my personal life. It's something that I've, I've gone through or I'm, I'm feeling, or if I'm, you know, having a bad day, I want to vent somehow, Mm. but other times, other times I'll have an idea in my head. That's not about me. And I'll, it's almost like I'm as if, as if I'm storytelling and I create like a character, I create a story um, or I tell someone else's story. And um, so sometimes it's in, you know, my point of view and my perspective. And sometimes those ones uh, are a little, you know, they're, they're more personal and stuff, but um, 
the feeling of something else uh, of someone else's story can be just as powerful. So yeah, like I, I have a song uh, I haven't, I haven't shown anyone, but it's about like uh, it's about a, a kid who climbs this. Okay. Here's a backstory. So I have, there's this like radio tower um, in like by my house and it's, it's huge. It's gotta be like 500 feet. It's like, it's, it's giant okay. and it's on top of a hill. And I've always just been like, huh, I'm not going to climb it, but what happened if you did? And, and so a part of like, it's a, it's about this kid who, um, who climbs this, this radio tower and then he, he slips and falls, but then someone takes him in. It's like this, like, it's like this guardian angel, like takes him in and, but he don't know, he doesn't know who it is. Uh, and so anyway, like that, for example, didn't happen to me, but it's a story that I make up and there's more to it too. That was like a very vague description. It doesn't really make sense, but, um, but yeah, you know, sometimes I, uh, I make a story of my own or, um, or it'll just take like its own crazy path. I don't know. That sounds like it could be its own screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. See, some of them, some of them are so random, but, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of just like another form of storytelling, I guess, through totally. a song. Do you see yourself releasing like another EP or album? In I want to at some point. Year? Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm in no rush though. Um, just because like, you know, I'm, I'm at a point right now with, um, with playing and stuff where I, I, I this past year, you know, it's it, because we've been stuck inside. It, I've just spent as much possible time as possible trying to um, practice as much as I can. And I, I'm, I'm at a point where I, I'm, um, I want to improve as, as, you know, cause I'm like 17, maybe, maybe in the next, uh, maybe in the next wee bit, I'll, I'll, I'll try to throw something out there, but I'm definitely in no rush. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd love to start a band at some point too. So I need to nice. put the puzzle pieces together. Nice. That's so exciting. Okay. I guess we haven't even touched too much upon Julie and the Phantoms. Yes. But let's, sorry. let's dive into that. that um, your character, Nick, and yourself are quite similar in some ways with yeah. the love for music and everything. Was it easy to kind of put yourself in his shoes because you guys are so similar? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was awesome. Like we, um, it, it made it pretty like natural feeling. I feel like all of our, all of the actors in the show, they, uh, something about them is like, they're connected to their characters and they're mm -hmm. such, they're like, they're real, the real life version of them is you can still see it in their character. So um, yeah, it, it just, that made it really fun for me just because it, I mean, it kind of makes your job easier when you're sort of being yourself and stuff, but um it also makes it really organic when you're working with other people as well. Like when you're working with, you know, Charlie, it's like you joke around sort of like, or I mean, I didn't, I mean, I didn't have a whole lot of scenes with Charlie, but, um, or like Owen and the guys, like them as a band, like them as their characters is basically them in real life. Like they, like they're, they're messing with each other. They're, you know, it, it's a very, uh, true representation of of the actors and stuff so that makes can, yeah I think you can feel like the chemistry on and off screen as cool. well as just all of you guys as a cast because yeah. you guys still interact after like over a year of production already so oh yeah that's oh yeah awesome. we're, we're all such great friends we're always in touch like we're always texting each other and oh, that's awesome. it's just it's the best that oh, this cast is amazing they're awesome I'm so I'm so stoked that I I can say that you know what I mean well, you do have a scene with Charlie, which is the hallway yeah. scene with you and Maddie as well. And yeah. you can't see that he's there. Can you talk about how fun it was to kind of interact with nothing, but he was there and yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was hard because Charlie, Charlie's hilarious. And he's such a, like a genius with these. He always, every take, he would do something different and all of it would be so funny. So I'd be standing there and he'd be like, like breathing on my neck or like, try to do something to kind of poke me, like mess with me. And um, it was really hard not to break that. That scene took a while to film, but, um, but yeah, it, it, it was, it's really fun kind of being oblivious to, uh, to what's going on. But, uh, and, and that, that scene's really, uh, it's fun because Julie, you know, she's like telling, trying to talk to Luke, but I'm like, wait, what's going on? It's just, it's very, there, there's a, it just kind of adds to the humor of the whole, um, the whole thing, but. Yeah, Char Charlie's amazing. That scene was so much fun. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I I hope in the future 
to hopefully have a couple more scenes like that. That'd be that'd be amazing. Um, from the sounds of it, it sounds like you guys did like a lot of improv bits on set as well. Did you put any improv in your character? Um, I, a little bit. I I I stuck to the script uh, most of the time. Like I, um, I kind of like to do that. Just as like me, I, I guess I I'm I'm more used to doing that. And and the first um, I was also in in this past season. What I what I noticed afterwards, like looking back. Like I was a little cautious. Like I wanted to, um, I guess I didn't, I didn't want to um, break too far away from my like lines and stuff or like uh, character. I don't, I don't know. Um, for me, I, I kind of just focus more on uh, sticking to the script and, and the page, but um, a lot of what the guys, the, the band, like so much of that is improv. You know what I mean? So much of that, so many of the looks, um, it's amazing being able to be in an environment where it's, it's safe to take those risks. Mm -hmm. um, like Kenny is always just like, bring ideas, like tell me about them. I want to hear them. We'll throw them in. We'll try it. If they don't work, they don't work. But if they do, then heck yeah, it, you know, it just adds to the whole thing, which I'm really excited about because I've never had that opportunity um, before Julie and the Phantoms to do that. And so, um, you know, hopefully if we get a season two, I'll um, feel a little bit more, I guess, comfortable to be, uh, and I'll try to bring bring a little bit more, uh, just just different ideas and, and play with it more, you know. Nice. Spoiler alert: If you have not seen Julie and the Phantoms, but uh, I I don't know why you haven't because it's just <laughs> such a good show. But um, the final scene where you and Cheyenne interact and Nick becomes possessed, where do you want to see your character go if there is a season two? Like the, the book is li literally open-ended there for you. Yeah, I, I, I'm I just excited to see what problems I can cause for the band, basically. Like, I'm just, I'm just excited to see um, where it goes. I honestly don't know. Um, it's funny because uh, I was talking to someone else about this the other day. People, have all, people started asking me a lot like, oh, like what's gonna happen in season two? Mm -hmm. uh, Cause they, I think, I think people sort of like expect me to, I don't know what's going to happen like at all. Mm -hmm. so it's funny because I'm genuinely like, I don't know. They're like, Oh, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah, you do. I'm like, no, I don't like, I genuinely don't know what's happening. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to see, uh, I'm just excited to see, uh, what problems are going to arise. You know, it, it, it makes perfect sense because Nick's like this nice kid. He's the last person you'd expect to be possessed by an, an evil ghost. So um, it'll probably catch some people off guard for sure. <laughs> um, talking about working with Kenny, what was it like? Because he is truly just a legend. What is it like working with a legend like Kenny Ortega? It's insane. It is absolutely insane. Oh my gosh. Like, oh, he, Kenny has this magic to him that is just, it's beyond, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, just watching him work is such a privilege and being able to work with him is, is absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, he just, he has this magic to him that um, brings like everyone up and it's crazy. It's funny too. He'll name drop some like gnarly people. Like, like I was, I was wearing my, I have a Rolling Stones hoodie yeah. and, um, and I was wearing it one day and he was like, Oh yeah, Mick, Mick's a great guy. Yeah. I haven't seen, I haven't seen Keith, Keith in a while. I'm like, what? Like, like, Oh my gosh. Or, uh, or yeah, like the Michael Michael Jackson stories and stuff like that. I'm just like, oh my goodness, like it, it, it's amazing, and he's such a down, genuine and down to earth guy. Um, I'm just, I'm so lucky to be able to work with him. That's awesome. He has like his like little um, powwow sessions. I, I think they're like hype sessions. Yeah. Oh what's, yeah. What's it like doing that? Like it's get... amazing. We get so <laughs> hyped up. Oh my gosh, it's like he, he, oh yeah. He gives the best pep talks. Like he brings everyone together. You get in a huddle and you just like, it's just, he, he's the ultimate guy at rallying the team. Basically. He's so good at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That the energy he bring, the energy he just like exerts on people is, it's just like, ugh, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It makes you feel so good. Yeah. It seems infectious. That's for sure. <laughs> so infectious. Oh my God. That's, that's a perfect way to describe it. Um, so your character gets to watch a lot of the um, Sunset Curve, Julian the Phantom performances from Edge of Great, from Stand Tall and Bright. Can you choose one that is your favorite out of all of them? Or uh... <laughs> I would say 
I would say bright just because uh, just just because that's like the first time in the show that um, you see Julie really come into her own and like mm-hmm. there's just you just see her like blossom into the rock star that she is and that that is just it's very uplifting and I was in the room watching them too uh, when they filmed that and man that room was amazing like just the energy when we were watching them film because because when they because when the band performs like they they're playing live while they're being filmed because like you can't like fake play the drums you know what I mean Owen was joking about that they're like oh so like did you play the drums he's like yeah dude I have to like you can't fake it um and so basically like when when uh, the band would be per- performing and, and, and filming these uh performances for the show they'd actually be performing live so we would all just get like a free live performance of Ju- Julie and the Phantoms. Um, You're cool. And that was, that was the, actually Bright was the first, um, Bright was the first song that they filmed too. So that just kind of added to like the, the energy of it all, which is, it, w- it was amazing. That's amazing. So you guys have like a lot of fun on set. Offset, mm-hmm. do you have any memories like filming in Vancouver or just hanging out in Vancouver that just stand out to you? Yeah. Oh my gosh. We went to a, uh, we went to Fright Fest actually in, um, yeah, we went to Fright Fest and it was cause we were, it was like, right as I got there a couple weeks after it was in October. Oh man. It was so funny. We, I went with Jada, Madison, Jeremy, uh, Ricardo Madison's dad. And then, um, Soyan, who is the costume, uh, uh, costume, uh, director designer and um and yeah that was super fun I remember it was raining and we we were like going on all these rides and like going through all these haunted houses and those are just and I kept the ticket to it at, like it's funny uh I have like all these little things that I did like uh going to dance I went to a couple concerts at uh, Rogers and um I kept all those oh my gosh I miss it so much I just want to go back to Vancouver I literally everyone is so amazing in Vancouver, in Canada. It's like, oh, everyone's so nice. I'm like, geez. I was, it's yeah, I yeah, so I was born and raised in Vancouver. So that's I cool. that's all I know. And I'm just so grateful to have just like spent my whole life here. So yeah. how is yeah. it how is it growing up in Vancouver? It's it's so nice. Like I don't know, there's like seasons, all the people are just like your typical Canadian people. Um, like when you go to I don't know, if if you go to like anywhere else, it doesn't feel as homey but I don't know if it's just because like I'm from here and like that's just how it is but it's just it's it's homey that's like the word yeah. that I would use to describe it For here sure. well another thing that I really love about Vancouver is like the the fact that it's a city and then there's nature around it totally yeah you get the best of both worlds because like yeah. I I love nature I'm a huge nature guy I love being outside um but I also love being in the city and finding a balance mm. is really hard anywhere else and yeah, I, oh gosh, I just felt like Vancouver was like the perfect, you know, you could be downtown and just look up and you just see like the mountains like that. Yeah. You can't get that anywhere else. So totally. I went to Toronto like a few years ago and it's just like, where are all the mountains? It's just like a couple hours out. But like yeah. I spent the weekend just like going for a walk downtown and we went from like downtown Granville area where like you guys sh- like shot a lot of the scenes yeah. and then walked straight to Stanley Park, which is literally like maybe half hour walk. Yeah, I love so nice. Oh my gosh. I walked. Yeah. So I walked. Were you guys so able to like bike the seawall or do any of that like touristy stuff? Yeah, I didn't I didn't personally bike the seawall, but I think I don't know if I was the only one who didn't. I know Madison did. I know Charlie did, but it was like at different times. Like we did mm-hmm. we did all oh man, next time I go, I'll try to rally everyone and we're all we'll all go at the same time. That'd be super fun. That'd be chaos. Have- oh my gosh. I literally haven't even biked the seawall and I'm from here. So that's something I need to do. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness. They're, we're just gone off the rails. I don't even know where we are in the interview anymore. That's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So what from like, I guess that whole season, what was something that stood out for you that you learned from that whole experience? Just, I, I just think uh, there's, oh my gosh, there's so many things just be, being on, learning, understanding how a set works, um, kind of just like the basic, uh, almost like basic e- etiquette things of being on set. Like there's like, you know, like I said before, like I had that experience with the Christmas story, but this was just like a whole nother beast. And mm-hmm. um, 
it gave me a really good understanding of, of how everything works and stuff. So, um, and I was learning new things every day, like watching, uh, watching the producers, watching, um, Kenny and everyone problem solve is like, it's incredible. And like understanding how you shoot a scene, you know, where you get your coverage and then you get the other person's coverage and then, you know, making sure you're on your mark, how, how it all works with the angles and stuff. There's just, there's so much information and, and, and so many things to learn from like everyone, um, whether you're behind the camera or in front of the camera. So really every day I, I couldn't pinpoint one thing. The whole experience was a, le- was a learning, uh, learning curve for me. Um, I've been just, because I've never experienced anything like that. And, um, it's hard to pinpoint one thing, but every day I was, I was watching and learning and observing and, um, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so happy that I came with, I came home with, uh, all those experiences and, and that knowledge that I, I didn't really have before. That's amazing. I, I just remember watching it when it came out and I was like, wow, this was shot in Vancouver. Cause like, I had never seen anything like that production wise, yeah, like, like Vancouver portrayed like that. And I was just so impressed by all of it. Yeah. And just, to, yeah, just to see the legacy still going on as strong as it has been since day one is yeah. crazy. Yeah. It, oh my gosh. It's amazing. And it's, it's funny you say like, I always forget that it takes place in LA because I can yeah. only, I can only picture it being in Vancouver for some reason. I can only picture the story like Julian, the Phantoms doesn't, for me, it's like, it didn't happen in LA. It happened in Vancouver. What are you talking about? Just because yeah. like filming up there, I have it engraved in my brain, but yeah, we uh, yeah we have such great fans though. Oh my gosh, they're keeping the that energy that energy going for sure. That's amazing. We have some fan questions if you want to answer yeah, some of them. For sure. Um, okay, we have a question from Megley, and she said, "If you could play any other character for one scene, which character would it be, and what scene would it be?" Ooh, that's good. I uh, oh Alex, and I would be dancing with Dirty Candy. <laughs> oh that's a good one that's that would a good be, one. I, that would be so fun i wasn't there when they filmed that oh man that would be so much fun though owen's the funniest he he's he's one of the funniest people that I've, I've ever met i mean the guy he's hilarious but uh that would that would be pretty fun or maybe or maybe a scene with carrie where i'm carrie and i'm being mean to somebody i think that'd be pretty fun uh just to see see how 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 mean i can get you know <laughs> hey, hey season two you're gonna be full mean mode <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly, exactly um sasha carlson brazil says if you didn't follow the path you were on right now performing arts and everything where do you think you would be instead i have no idea i don't i i have no clue i i never pl- I've, I've naturally never played like a i think most people would say like oh like i'd be playing sports or like doing something but i am um, yeah, I ne- I've never played team sport in my whole life. I, I don't know. Performing is everything I know, like all I know, you know what I mean? And so maybe I would, uh, I, I mean, hockey looks fun, but I, I don't know. I, I think I'd be really focused on, I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm really focused on school and stuff. And, um, but I, maybe I would be trying to pursue something differently ac- academically, or I, I don't know. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, that's a really good question. Now that <laughs> I, it's a mystery to me too. It's a mystery to me too. I feel like if you're a creative person, there's honestly no other place you'd rather be. I, like, yeah. yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm just like meant, I'm just meant to do that. I, 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 it's my biggest, I can't get that feeling anywhere else, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I, I, oh, I, I love performing. It's yeah, all like, I, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I have a musical background and like I'm in the film industry and stuff too. So yeah. for me, it's just like imagining anything else just doesn't quite make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't fit right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay. One more question. We have Sammy. She says, how do you envision a villain song for yourself next season? If there is a season two. I'm not sure actually, because, because shy, like I, what Caleb, uh, this, it was very theatrical which is very Cheyenne, which is amazing. Oh my gosh. He's Cheyenne is like, he's a God. We need like, if we, he's incredible. I wrote, I wrote actually the last day I was on set when we had the possession scene, I wrote in the car with him and I was just like, Oh oh my gosh, he's right there. Like (laughs) it was, it was, it was really funny. He's such a nice guy though. Oh my gosh. He, um, and and incredibly talented. Um, I don't know. See, it, it may, it, 
it could either go that way uh, in a musical theater direction, just because that's what Caleb sort of embodies that, that flashy magician uh, attitude, or, you know, it could be something else. Maybe, maybe Kenny would be like, we're going to, we're going to throw a, a sprinkle of, of Nick or sprinkle of Sasha in there and see, see what we get, or maybe a mixture of both. That's so exciting. Like, honestly, season two, fingers crossed, guys. Like, we're so excited. Fingers are crossed. Um, for the Hangout, we always want to see how music kind of impacts people in different ways. How would you say it's impacted you personally in your own way? Music has, is just, it is everything to me. Like, I, I listen to music every day. I, if, I, if I could, I would listen to it all day. Just because there's something about it that just it fuels me and um whatever emotion you're feeling it, it's it's such an express i don't know how to describe it it's such an expressive uh form of art and um, i i seriously just can't get enough of it and it's changed it's i i've been heavily influenced by certain bands like Greta van fleet and i think that when you uh, have that aha moment when you're listening to somebody it can totally change your direction like for me like that that made me be like oh my gosh i want to play rock and roll this is what i want to do and it's crazy because a, a song has the power to do that you know which is which is really crazy um yeah it's just it's shaped sort of my style and my my you know my attitude and the person that i am and um i'd be a very different person if i didn't have music uh, i don't think i'd be uh, i just wouldn't be i wouldn't be so, the same sasha that you're you know kind of talking to right now so would, would you say you're a hardcore concert goer? Like, do you go to a lot of concerts and stuff or? Well, see, I actually haven't been to a ton, but I, I, I love, like when I go there, I love them. Like, I, I wish I could go to them all the time, but I just don't go to enough. And especially oh, right now, I'm really bummed. I'm oh like, my God. Oh. Don't remind me. Don't remind me. <laughs> it was so cool. Uh, when I went to Rogers, I went and saw the, I went and saw the Chainsmokers, which was awesome. But I also oh, saw cool. the Black Keys, which was amazing. Nice. I, I love it was incredible. That was actually the last concert that I saw the Black Keys. And so oh, I got the memories on my phone, like in December. And I was just like, oh, take me back. Take me back. So nostalgic. But we'll get back there, everybody. We'll get back there at some point. Everybody stay safe. Okay. Wow. We went crazy over time. I'm so sorry. But oh my gosh, no <laughs> it was so no. great chatting to you. Oh, this, man. This is, that's, that's like, that's like, <laughs> Sasha. it's like a typical podcast thing. You, you go off route, you go oh. everywhere and you come back. I go everywhere. I, I, I cannot stay on the same topic. It's, it's like, I, if I try, it just doesn't, I end up in like every, which direction possible. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's the fun thing. You just have like regular conversations with people and you just discover random things. Yeah, for oh, sure. Good. Nice. Okay. Well, that was Sasha Carlson and thank you for being on the hangout. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. This is so much fun. I love talking about music this is, and Julie and the Phantoms. Yes. The fact that anyone even wants to talk to me about it, makes me so happy. So thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I had such a good time.